Mozart's Music of Friends invites you into a time period when chamber music was not played in large concert halls, not by professional ensembles who have rehearsed or who have studied scores, not where they're up on a stage separate from the audience, but picture instead a room sort of like this one, where friends and familiars gather together to play through new music each week just for the enjoyment of playing together and listening to one another play. So you have this ambiance where the music making and the socializing are very deeply intertwined. There was this music publisher in Vienna named Johann Treig who put out an advertisement in the local newspaper saying, many families here in Vienna like to have concerts every week, but don't have enough music for all of your concerts. So he advertised a subscription series. You pay him a fee, and every week he gives you new music. You can play through symphonies, you can play through string quartets, uh, but the important thing was you had to return the music the very next day so that he could give you new pieces to play the following week. He had in his catalog a thousand different string quartets by over a hundred composers, so that alone gives you sense of just how much music the Viennese aristocrats were consuming. Many historical authors who wrote about string quartets made comparisons to conversation, but they did it in very different ways. There was this German author named Koch. His idea was a quartet should have no soloist. It's not a piece where one instrument dominates and the others are just accompanimental. What makes a quartet special for him is that all the different instruments are always exchanging roles. One leads, but then the other leads. One's accompanying, then the other accompanies. So this idea of exchange, just like in a conversation. But you compare that to this Italian author, Carpani. He says, no, 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 a quartet is like you have these four different personalities. So he says the first violinist is the leader, the brilliant one with all the great ideas, the charismatic one who decides what the quartet should be about. And you compare that to the second violinist who has no ideas of his own. He's just approving what his friend said. He's the yes man to the first violin, but doesn't contribute anything original. So Carpani's idea is that when we play these quartets, we assume the personalities of these different characters. We enter into the conversation as the players. If we're listening to the quartet, it's just the same as if we're listening to a conversation. The exciting thing about thinking about Mozart's music of friends is that we often know who the friends were. So many of his pieces, we know exactly who they were written for. Mozart's Kegelstadt trio for clarinet, viola, and piano. The clarinet part was for his buddy Stadler. The piano part was for this beautiful young student of his, Franziska von Jacken. He played the viola part himself. Mozart had a wild sense of humor. He was terribly silly. Uh, the idea that composed into these pieces of music are the same games that these folks would have enjoyed together and that we sort of witness their friendship as we play this music or as we listen to it. The book comes with a companion website that will be fun and engaging for Mozart lovers of all stripes. You can find recordings of a lot of the chamber pieces that I discuss. Many of them come with animated videos that explain what's going on in the music so you can watch and listen. There is an anthology of historical paintings and drawings so you can, so to speak, step into these interiors where this music was played. And then for those who want to dig even deeper, there's an anthology of many of the historical documents so you can read directly what these authors have to say.